Shauna, 2014, um, you were diagnosed with breast cancer. How were you first diagnosed, and how long were you in treatment? Um, I was first diagnosed. I had made an appointment with my doctor, gynecologist, because I feel, was feeling so imbalanced, like hormonally. It was like, why, why am I crying all the time, and why am I just something's not right? So I was just going, had the appointment that night before I was taking a sweatshirt off or something and I felt this little bump. Didn't really think anything of it. I I really didn't. I'm like, that's kind of weird. So I told my friend and she's like, well, just make sure you tell her about it when you go. Make sure you bring it up. So, I mean, I go into the doctor's office and I wasn't even thinking about the bump, about that. I was thinking more about what is, why am I so, and I think six months to a year before they had put me on uh, a hormone pill. Um, And I I truly feel like that's probably what caused it. And now they, women, they don't, they make different types now that aren't um, that type. But I had said, so she's checking me out and everything like, I'm crying. I'm like, I don't know why I'm crying. There's not even any reason to be crying. I just don't know why. I'm just something's not right. We need to adjust something. And then I'm like, oh, by the way, I found this little bump here. Oh, wow. So she feels it, and she said, well, let's just go ahead and get that checked out. So she set up a, a diagnostic mammogram right away, like that day. Yeah. And so I went to get it, and then... Um, I had to wait a day. Then they called me back to come in. And my mother-in-law, Sue, who well, Jeff and I were divorced, but Sue, the Clark family, we were very, very close. And so Sue went with me, and they put me in this little room, the conference thing, and then the doctor comes in with the papers, and there was another girl there, a uh, nurse, and they said, um, well, yeah, we found something. And it's a basically late stage two, early stage three, it's traveled from your breast to your lymph nodes, so we consider that more of a stage three. Um, so here we are, and then I'll hear, wah, 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 wah. It's, people tell you this all the time, but from that point, like you just only hear like Charlie Brown, you don't hear wow. anything else. Yeah. And that's why Sue, my mother-in-law went with me, because she recorded it, because she had an idea, like they don't call you back in like that if there's not yeah. a reason why. So that was like, you know, you leave there with the book that's about this thick that basically you go through and they, you know, they circle like different. And then at that time, you, um, the the nurse that was there was assigned as like your assistant, uh, you know, like your mediator, the one that kind of helps you get through the process. So then it's like, well, what's next? What's, what are we going to do? Let's just, let's go get this, go cut it out. Let's do whatever we got to do. So the original plan was um, surgery, mastectomy, do double mastectomy, do whatever you got to do, and then chemo. Well, then when I went to the call, I first went to a surgeon, and then I had to wait like a week before I kind of knew what the path was going to be. So now it's like, yeah. all right, so you have a path so now. So okay, all of a sudden, whatever you're doing isn't important anymore, as far as you've just got to go to get this fixed so I didn't really know it took a week before the surgeon got back with what and then uh, you know, met with the oncologist did all the blood work that took another week and then when the oncologist got all the blood work she's like here's where we are with this and they, they've made so much progression with breast cancer so I'm very fortunate about that that but she said with where you are we're going to go ahead and do aggressive chemo then surgery, and then more chemo, and then radiation, because we want to get this. Yeah. And so it kind of set the path different. So I started with chemo. My first chemo, um, Sue went with me, my mother law and, you know, we're in there and didn't know what. I, I had cut my hair all off just because, and, you know, because it, it was probably about like this, and I just took the scissors and went like that and, and just kind of get ready for it. And so I did my first, uh, well, and another note story is we had just lost 
um, my father-in-law, Jeff's dad, had died just under a year from uh, prostate cancer. And it was so late in the process that once he was diagnosed, usually that's one that they can get through. Uh, he didn't. He didn't last very long. And, and we had just lost him. And so I ended up having the same oncologist, same room where he had his treatments, same nurse. Uh, and so Sue was kind of like, I'm going through this with you. I know how to do it. You know, I know. So it was like she's re going right back there to where she wow. just lost her husband. And uh, so Anae, who was our, my nurse, who ended up being Sherry's nurse also when she started her chemo. Um, so she's in there, and they're getting, I had to get the port in, and then they're hooking you all up. And I'm like, so how many days before my hair falls out? She's like, 12. I'm like, what? I wasn't expecting that <laughs> yeah. answer. And she's like, yeah, it's pretty much 12. With what you're, the, the strong doses that we're giving you, you you'll, you'll notice it pretty much right away. And... Um, and it did. It went long, and it was kind of just came out in patches. And then, you know, what do you do? Shave your head. So, um, it was. It, oh, and the first chemo, we were going to leave, and I couldn't catch my breath. So, we went back up, and they sent me down the emergency room. I was there probably another three or four hours. I had a reaction to one of the chemo drugs. So then we had to reset the process. We had to take one drug away, add a couple more. So it was a long process, um, probably a year of chemo, and then they did the surgery, which didn't have to have the mastectomy because her path, my oncologist's path was like, we're gonna, we're gonna dive into this thing, and I'm like, do whatever you got to do. I'm, I'm there. So they had to remove um, 18 lymph nodes, and and the lump, and then part partial area, and. Um, that all went well. Like, I don't have any feeling on this arm, yeah. and I have a hard time moving, you know, like getting it back, yeah. but I haven't had to ha wear those arm sleeves at this point. Um, so then we did the, removed the lump, did the whole process of draining it and all that, and then uh, I went back to chemo, and then it was getting close to the end of, of chemo. That was probably another six months of chemo, and um, then we we're getting ready to start radiation. And that's when um, Ray and Aaron Everham approached me about remodeling there. Uh, you know, Kelly Earnhardt did a lot for me with the GoFundMe. The, I mean, your life just stops. And then you're like, and then they tell you, you know, just take a shoebox. And because, you know, stress only makes it worse. So just put your bills in the, in the shoebox. Do not worry about them. We'll, we'll, get, we'll go through them. We'll figure it all out. And... Now, who's I mean, telling you this? My mother-in-law, who's, okay. who's like an accountant and, yeah. and just somebody that was there for me in the lot. And then Kelly did the GoFundMe, which, you know, out of pocket, you were probably like at 20000 That was a, with 80% insurance. I mean, it still didn't matter. You still had so much debt. And um, so I, uh, I worked throughout. Like, I still had the happy chair. I was still doing shows after my... Uh, Second chemo, I was at Metrolina. I had a booth set up and trying to... I, it, it helped me. You just had to kind of, like, be careful because my white blood count was so low that one day I got bit by some mosquitoes on my ankle and my, my foot must have swelled up that big. It oh, had wow. just a reaction. Yeah. And everything, like, you would get a little scratch or cut and you'd have marks all over, bruises, and, you know, you're just... You were weak, so you had to listen to your body, but... And there were days that I didn't feel good. And, you know, I just tried to get from the bed to the bathtub and the Epsom salt bath and then make it back to the bed. And you were always cold because you were, didn't have any hair. And I was, you know, I'd sleep in the little hats. And, it, but I still, like, tried to keep going as much as I could. And then um, Ray and Aaron met with me. And I, I'm like, I'm done with chemo. And, and they knew. I had went to one of the catwalks. I have done all the catwalks from the last 10 years for Catwalk for a Cause for Truex Foundation. And one of them, that's when Danica had come in. I, I actually went bald. I, and I was, like, that confident. It was, it was a big deal. A lot of people questioned, like, why would you do that? Well, it's who I am. And, and wigs itched. It was not comfortable, and it <laughs> yeah. was hot. And so I was kind of like, hey, this is, this is where I am. And uh, anyway, Ray and Aaron had uh, approached me, and it was a Amelia Island uh, condo they had just bought, and they wanted to remodel it. So 
I got with my um, gun, my oncologist, and we got, were able to get my radiation transferred to the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville. So I'm on a mission now. It's like I'm ready. So I uh, went. I had to go create. I had to like bid the job and find the contractor and get everything. One day I'd go pick out the lighting and all the stuff. And but for 28 days I would get on the ferry and go over to the Mayo Clinic and and uh, go to go to radiation and then come back. And that, that was that's when I started having fun with wigs. I went to like a flea market in uh, Florida, <laughs> in Jacksonville, one of yeah. those you know right off the highway. Yeah. And there was just a whole booth of like. I wouldn't call them stripper root wigs, but you know where you go by the not not the great wigs. Yeah. And uh, so I'd bought one that was real long, and I put little pigtails, and <laughs> so I I would uh, they they always made uh, fun of me at the radiation because they'd be like, we never know what you're gonna look like when you come in. <laughs> but then my hair started growing back, and it was so funny because it grew back. I blame it on how many times I guess I colored my hair throughout the years, but it came back like there was a blonde circle right here. And then it was kind of red, and then it was dark in the back, and then a little bit of gray, salt and pepper. And I had one lady walk up to me on in a, uh, outside of a million and be like, God, I love your hair. How did you? It's so artsy. And I'm like, well, it just kind of grew back that way. I said, I blame it on all the color. I that's not gave. funny, but yeah. it's funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So that's, um, I'll tell you, that helped me so much because I did that job. You know, there were, there were a few days where I didn't feel so good. And they, they were so grateful to really work with me and understand that. And I was still totally able to remodel this place. And I even bought a lot of furniture here and got a box truck, had, took it down, unloaded, put it all together. I mean, yeah. I did everything from ripping out the kitchen to everything floors walls and totally redid it and totally furnished it and they came in to see it for the first time and it was candles were lit ready to go <laughs> and they still have it today they still love it so how are you doing today i'm good um i had a couple little scares uh, a couple years ago uh felt the same thing you know same spot same way i went to my doctor which i am due to go to my doctor i do need to get back there but, yes, um, you do. Yeah, I do. I do. My, my <laughs> Sue, my mother-in-law has been like, have you called Dr. Mercer yet? Have you I'm like, no, oh, I will. Um, I've, I'm, I've had six years. I had to take a, the, I call it the cancer pill that helps kind of your bones. You have a lot, you have to do bone tests and all that because it really weakens your bones. Now, are chemo. you considered cancer-free or in remission? No, I'm, not, no I'm, can, I'm considered cancer-free. Okay, all right. Well, when I had that and they did that thing again, the diagnostic, and uh, there, it was fatty tissue. There was a, an yeah, area yeah, there, yeah, but yeah. it was not um, benign. What was it like to hear those words? Oh, great. But you, you know, you kind of get yourself ready. It's, I was scared. Yeah. I was scared. You know, and I have some friends that are, go are going through things like Sherry, um, which is her cancer is totally different and uh in a different way, but boy, if somebody can give you a, a look of reality that's uh, the brighter side, even though you, your side's not very bright, but you're, you're, you, she has changed cancer treatment in ovarian cancer for so many women. She has, she has knocked doors down with the, the Levine, the cancer center there that's under her name, just all, everything that she's done. And, and then Robin, another friend of mine, is going through, which hers is a different type also, a stomach cancer. And she's, she's on her second or third round of chemo, and it's, it's, it's tough. So when race fans <clears throat> go through a set of old Max race cards or Trax cards yeah. or whatever you're on, and they see your picture and they see your card, what would you like for them to think of when they see that name, Shauna Robinson? She, she was good. She was great. If she only would have had better equipment, I think that girl would would have gone all the way. Uh, would have been the one. And that's what my that's what my sight was, you know, to be in be in the highest level and 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 be full time and be competitive. That's what I wanted. And I think that I I do have a lot of great great fans. And I really didn't even realize that until when I 
uh, Facebook kind of just came out and a friend of mine was like, you need to get Happy Chair out there. You need to start marketing. And I'm like, oh, I don't know how to do any of that stuff. Computer technology. So she set up um, a Facebook page for me. Well, next thing you know, I've got 5,000 friends and uh, it's, all race, it's all racing people. And they were like, oh my God, when are you going to get back out there? Just so much support. And I still get, every day I still get fan mail. I still get cards to sign and great little notes and and I always sign them and then I'll write on a separate piece of paper, thank you so much. Yeah. You know, and of course I don't have the pile that all the drivers of today have, but I still have some and I'm I just think it's so cool. It warms my heart to just know that I still get that. Um yeah, I, I'm pretty lucky. Because a lot of times now I think when you go to the track, there's a lot smaller pool of people you run into that remember you or yeah. that were there yeah. then. Yeah. You know, and those people remember you. And I think I had a lot of respect with a lot of the crew members and a lot of the uh, teams in the days. And now it's just so different. It's so young. But um, a lot of people don't don't know the history there. So, um, well, that's why we're here. That's why we're here. I call it the vintage years. <laughs> you know, I always love vintage everything, vintage yeah. clothes, vintage fabric. So I fit right in with that. Um, I did want to follow up when we were talking about the treatment and all that. After, um, I think it was a year later, Tanner was 19. So he's just at five years now. My son, um, was diagnosed with testicular cancer. Yes, at 19. And um, he had to, he, his chemo started immediately and it was very fast. Like he did, it wasn't the 30 days, it was like 14, but every single day and his hair fell out and um, he, he's, he's good now. They, they did surgery. Um, and we took all the precautions of in case, you know, he needed to, we did the donor, or not the donor, but the save it, save it for later thing, if in case, you know, he wasn't able to have children. But um, he, he did go through that. It was at the time he was um, gaming professionally. He was, uh, he would travel and do tournaments on, a, I think it's World of Warcraft, or I don't know which one. I'm so bad at that. But anyway, he was on teams where he, he competed, competed for money. Yeah. And there was like five guys in a team, and they would travel over. And then um, so that hit him hard because he, he was at that level where he was 19, 20. That's when you really hit that, that era of being at the pro level there. And uh, so it, it knocked him off his feet for a while, and it weakened. And he's tall and thin, so... Um, it was so hard, and I didn't care. I don't care. I would have went through treatment a million more times to not see him have to go through that. But um, it's all good. He's five years now, which is, gosh, time flies. And um, so he's, he gets checked all the time, and um, he's doing good. He kind of got back into gaming again and, and traveled and was competing, and then COVID hit, and they stopped all the tournaments, of course. And now he's at um, Roush Yates, with his, working at Roush Yates Engines with uh, Jeff. Not in the same room. They'd kill each other. <laughs> but um, yesterday, I had to take him to uh, have an EEG done. So he has, enough, right now, got about 40 wires hooked up to his brain because he's had four seizures in, like, the last two months, and we don't know what's causing it. So... He has to wear this till he gets it off on Friday. So they did the uh, first scan that was an hour. They do it right in the office. And then this one's a 72-hour. So he has to wear it for the three days, and then he goes back, and then the, then the neurologist will review. But we just he can't drive right now. I mean, no. it's like he can't drive, so he's got to he, – he's between here, my house, Jeff's house, his grandma's house, and – he can't drive, he can't swim, because we just don't know. I mean, he had the last seizure, we well, had one after that, but one was at work, they had to call an ambulance, and he was literally just at his desk, and he just fell over, and we just don't know what it is. That's what's so frustrating, and it's almost like you want him to maybe have, even if it's in his sleep, or he had one in his sleep, and didn't know it till he kind of got up, and the whole inside of his mouth was chewed up. So it's almost like you want him to have maybe somewhat of a of a 
activity while he's monitored so they yeah, can figure yeah, out yeah, what's yeah. causing it. Yeah. Because the the reports aren't really showing anything. And it's not epilepsy. We know that. It's not diabetes. We've, they've done all the blood work and all the tests. So we're going to get it figured out. He'll be back to it. Because you were a race car driver for so long, a competitor, when you went through what you went through and now what your son is going through, does that competitive desire come back in the sense that, you know what, I'm going to beat this? Um, I think as a mother, it's just different. Like, I am competitive, yeah, and I'm going to break doors down. And, yeah, I'm angry, why? But it's more just I feel so, like, I just want to fix it. I just want to want him to well, we all do it's like what's causing this and and but it's more of the heartbreak than yeah. it is the competitiveness yeah, yeah. with him it's more yeah. the heartbreak yeah of just mm-hmm. it, you don't give up and with him it's like you're totally positive and we're going to fi- get this figured out you know one way or another we're going to get it figured out but it's it just breaks my heart all right anything else um no what i'm doing now i'm decorating I'm not doing the chair thing anymore. Okay. I, I am doing um, pretty much decorating full time. Um, right now, I'm working on a new build, Worth Everham. Uh, I just did a, a. They sold their house so quickly that they had to uh, get a place to live for the build, which is going to take about a year, year and a half. So uh, they bought a townhouse in Davidson, and I went in there and furnished the whole thing and put it all together for them so they could get moved in in about seven days. Not even that, five days. <laughs> <laughs> Got that done, and then um, I'm working on a new build right here off Williamson, and um, and I've got I still do stuff for Sherry all the time. With uh, did the motor coach before it went went off, and um, at uh, Pappas, uh, I've I've been really lucky that I have really good clients. And then the second this other new build is a new person that isn't in racing, yeah. but um, I'm fortunate to have an opportunity to work for a builder and um, select things. So. I'm, it's COVID was a little sad and slow and uh, for all of us, but then um, I'm starting to get busy again. So that's good. So that's where I'm, I did Hop Town. We are here at Hop Town. <laughs> yeah. Everything you see here, we picked out. I worked along with Sandy, but I mean every single thing, every lighting, every everything you see here, I was part of, which is pretty cool. And I think that it's a great place. Awesome. 